so we are on our third episode, <laughs> thank you, um, of our series on aviation. We, if you are attending for your first time, we cover everything that is fundamental to life, everything that helps you to expand your vision in life and everything that you may not have thought of, <laughs> everything we, we cover the whole scope. We really pride ourselves on um, exposing you, your mind, your conscious, your subconscious to um, paradigm shifting content. And for those of you who have been bold enough to come on this evening to see what it is all about, we commend you because these are the types of things that you need to be exposing yourself to, your loved ones, your children, your nieces and your nephews, so that we can use this exposure to build um, worthy visions or worthy goals that are aligned with the great destiny that we all have. And I do, you know, I do genuinely hope that you stay on this journey with us um, so I can look at you, you can look at me in 12 months time and say, wow, look how far we've come. It really is a full time effort um, to actually keep yourself in a space of optimism um, and of growth. And although we do this once weekly, we do have our, our range of online platforms, social media platforms, I should say, at Spiritual Injection, whereby you can stay in tune um, with with our previous content, with our forthcoming content, and also you can um, you can also enter competitions. We have a competition running at the moment in our Telegram group. The link will be posted in the chat shortly, and you have the you have a chance of um, being gifted with a series ticket. Um, and all we need from you is your testimony. We just, want a, we just want a testimony. We can have loads of testimonies on the line, some great ones on the line. We would like you to submit your testimony to us through our Telegram group. Um, and then, you know, the, we, you, will, you will stand the chance of um, being gifted with a series ticket, um, which means a four week access to our program. Now, this evening is no exception. We have, last week we had two pilots, two captains, I should say, two, two, let me give them their props. We have two, we had two captains on last week. And what was interesting about their journey, I mean, aviation, most people that I've spoken to about aviation, are having a conversation with someone today, even about it. And first um, impression of this, this theme, this industry is that, you know, gosh, we're priced out of it. Um, we're priced out of it. How, you, how would you get started? You know, how much would the training cost? Um, would it even be possible to, to um, extend your budget? It's not like going to university where you can get a loan up front. You know, how do, how do you go about it? And what we aim to do and what we're doing very successfully is tearing down those barriers that really cause ourselves to close um, to close our mind really to great things. The pilots, the captains that were on last week, they spoke about their journey and they spoke about their, um, their tenacity and determination in achieving their goal. And again, what inspired them to take on such a, a unique and worthy goal of being, um, of thriving, or they are thriving in the aviation industry was exposure. At some point in their lives, um, it happens, so just so happens for them, it was as youngsters, they were exposed to aviation, whether that be looking at planes, going to the airport. And this is really transferable. What we, what we, we always share with you on a spiritual injection can be transferred to many different things. And that's what makes our program so valuable. Aviation's on the flyer, but best believe that you are going to have um, many, many principles that you can apply to many different areas in your life. So that was the main principle, um, determination, um, um, a steely focus on what it is that you aspire to do. And also the importance of exposing the young people around you, not necessarily trying to funnel them into a particular um, industry, 
but exposing them so that they can make informed choices, not, not choices that are given to them, you know, in a perspective from university or given to them by whatever they see the people around them doing, but an informed choice based upon knowing what the capabilities are out there. So we are going to press on with today's program. Um, today we have our um, special guest, Brian Monet, um, Captain Brian Monet, who again um, will give you great insights, such, such um, tangible, very, very tangible insights. And I do hope that you have brought on your family members um, particularly those who are impressionable in terms of the direction that they want to take in their life. I noticed I didn't put an age on it. I just said those are impressed who are impressionable with regards to the direction that they want to take in their life because what we're going to share with you this evening again is mindset shifting, um, vision building content. So let's move on, brother Odate. Thank you. was never because be now on a Thursday between 7 and 8.30 GMT, we yeah, change well. lives and we give information that, you know, shapes the destiny of all of those who are on our platform. So welcome to the Spiritual Injection, Captain Brian Monet. Let me um, address you appropriately. It's such a pleasure to Thank have you, you on. Um, it's I a pleasure will, to be here. Yeah, I will. And you're, considering you are such a busy man, I can see you're very active. Your um, media pages are, are popping. You know, I can see that. But your the promptness of your responses to me, like you kept me on my A game. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, I can't leave you hanging every time we have to give you response I can at least have the courtesy, courtesy to respond promptly so thank you for your communication um, it says a lot about you it says a lot about you the fact that you can be attentive to someone that you didn't even know you know um, you know it says a lot about you so I just really wanted to um, for you to have give us a, 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 a brief introduction who is Captain Bryant Monet and you know what is your journey all right thank you everybody hi my name is brian monette captain brian monette if you actually i should probably give him the salute right okay. <laughs> um i uh i am a corporate uh captain i fly a uh, gulfstream g550 for a company called silver air and uh we are based in van nuys california which is just northern los angeles I'm sure everybody knows where los angeles is so to give you a nice little geographical location um the company, however, is based in Santa Barbara, but most of our fleet is in Van Nuys, California. Um, I've been working with this company for about eight years now, just a little over eight years. Um, I became a captain back in 2019 and just kind of been like riding the wave ever since. Um, I started this journey way back in 2003 in my aviation career. And I, my main purpose and the reason I'm even on this interview is to inspire people like myself, who may not know how to get involved in aviation, to show them uh, ways that they can get involved. Thank you. And 
So your and it does show, you know, your inspirations is definitely show all over your page. And it was something that um really inspired me to reach out to you was that clip. And many of you on the line would have seen that in our promotional material of mm -hmm. um Captain Monette um talking about taking a young boy on a flight and then um being proud to announce that that young boy that he took on his first flight was now a pilot. Um, how did that happen, Victoria, Captain? How did that happen? Well, I met, uh, his name is Demetrius Ingram. He is currently a first officer for American Airlines flying a Boeing 737 okay. um, out of uh, New York. Uh, I believe it's New York. Either New York, oh no, sorry, Washington, D.C. Okay. And uh, I met him back in 2008. He was 12 years old and just, just a young little kid. And at the time I was running a flight simulator program, me and another uh, colleague of mine named Martel Bush, we were running this flight simulator program at Los Angeles airport, actually on the south end, if anybody's been to Los Angeles airport, big place. On the south end, on the south runways, there's a location called Flight Path Museum. The Flight Path Museum decided to open up this uh, flight simulator program for the youth. And Martel is the one who got involved in that first as an instructor and he decided to bring me on. Now, I met Martel years ago, but anyway, we're talking about the Demetrius right now, so we can talk about that another time. Um, we were running this flight simulator program, and I was the assistant instructor, but after they realized my talents, I became one of the primary instructors. And when I started running the class with Martel at, on the sidelines, um, Demetrius Ingram was one of the students for that class. He was brought there by another friend, a mentor of his named Ken White. And Ken White wanted Demetrius to be involved in a program like this because Demetrius grew up in a rough neighborhood right. um, in South Central L.A. Yeah. And so this guy, uh, Ken, who was another friend of mine, by the way, uh, introduced yeah. Demetrius to this program to expose him to aviation and something more positive so he wouldn't be in the streets. Right. Um, so I met Demetrius and uh, we're 10 years apart. I'm currently oh. 37. He's 27. But at the oh. time he was 12. I was 22, 22 young yeah. guys, but he was yeah. super young. I mean, just like he didn't know what he was going to do with his life, right. uh, but he did have a fascination in airplanes. Okay. So that's why he got in this program. I met him and we just hit it off right off the bat. Smart kid, very intelligent, um, charisma, funny, everything. And I'm just like, this is a cool kid. So me and him, despite us being 10 years apart, we hung out. And during the time we hung out, um, there was one time I took him up on a sightseeing tour because I was doing sightseeing tours out of the Compton airport, which is not very far from South Central, not far from LAX. Mm -hmm. And when that flight happened, he was sitting on the right seat. I was sitting left seat. We had two passengers in the back and he absolutely like, mm. he loved it. It's like, it's like a dream come true for him. He, he never took control of an airplane before because I let him take control for a few minutes. Oh, now you okay. probably think a 12 year old flying an airplane with passengers in the back and I'm the <laughs> pilot is like, what's going on? Like, no, trust me, this kid's a sharp kid. Right. I know a star kid when I see one. So I'm just okay. saying, hey, here, take the controls, make a little turn here and there. And he nailed it every single time. He fell in love with that. And by the time he got back on the ground, he was just so thankful, so appreciative. And he kept coming back to that class every single Saturday. We were running it every single Saturday during the summer of 2008. And he um, eventually started paying for uh, flying lessons. Um, he took out loans. Uh, he applied for scholarships. And I hope everybody's listening and paying attention and writing down notes because um, this is some of the little key points here. Getting scholarships is key and having a good uh, GPA, um, you know, studying and doing all that kind of stuff in school. He was eligible to get some good scholarships. So he was able to pay for some scholarships that way. Um, his grandmother was helping pay for some lessons. Uh, Ken was helping to pay for some lessons. And he eventually got his private pilot license. And from there, he was able to carry passengers and fly around pretty similar to how I was doing when I flew him except he wasn't able to get paid for it. So oh. when you have a private pilot license, you can't fly for hire, meaning you can't get paid for it. Oh, okay. But he just kept taking the necessary steps, eventually got his uh, instrument rating, which allows you to fly an airplane in the clouds without reference to the ground, which you see a lot of airliners do these days. He got that certificate and then he got his commercial license, license uh, shortly after that. And once he got that, it was like full speed ahead. He's just been flying airplane after airplane and just building up his time. Eventually, he got hired by um, a company at Van Nuys Airport called Clay Lacey. Clay Lacey is another uh, corporate aircraft company similar to the one that I fly with, Silver Air. Yeah, okay. both, uh, they're both uh, Van Nuys based as far as their airplanes are concerned. And he was flying a, a Learjet 
35, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, actually, you know what? Take it a step back. He actually got hired at a company at Alaska Airlines called Raven Air. Okay. So he left California, went to Alaska and flew um, tiny single engine planes and then moved up to multi-engine planes, built up his time there. Then he came back to California and started flying for Clay Lacey. So I, I missed a step. It was a long time ago. <laughs> so he eventually um, built up enough hours at Clay Lacey and got hired at uh, PSA Airlines, which is American Airlines, but it's like a, a regional version of American Airlines. Right. And he just worked his way up the corporate ladder and eventually got enough hours uh, to become a captain at PSA Airlines. And that's the reference to the video that I made when I flew with him uh, for the first time as a passenger on his flight which is pretty amazing. You know, it was just a heartwarming experience. So he just said, uh, it just happened to work out. I just happened to be, you know, available at the time he was going on his flight. He invited me, I brought my cameras, I'm like, let's do this. So we made the video and at first it wasn't very popular, but it, maybe like a few months later, it, it just started popping off and everybody was like, oh my God, this, this is amazing. Took a young kid from this and brought him up to this just by inspiration and, you know, showing him the, the right path and showing him the means to do it. And since then, he got hired at American Airlines because he had like a flow program from PSA to American Airlines. And now he's the first officer on American Airlines. And it's only a matter of uh, maybe a couple of years before he becomes a captain. And from there, it's just like, the sky's the limit. Wow. Wow. So what kind of time frame are we talking about since he's Demetrius, his first flight with you at the age of 12 until him actually being able to first fly, um, get that the license where he could fly without without rental, and then yeah. uh, moving on to flying for payment. Um, my memory as far as the timeline of his career is kind of spotty. Okay. I do remember the beginning, I remember some middle parts, and I, of course I remember the present, um, but it, I would say, I would say within like a 10 year span, Okay. He went from from zero to hero, we call it. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, he, he's he went a lot faster than a lot of people do um, in his position, uh, just because he's so bright. Right. Uh, a lot of people. A lot of people take longer. Some people do it quicker. You know, when they have the money up front. Uh, mm -hmm. But of course, he did not have the money up front. Okay. Um, he had to take out loans and you know borrow from other people and things like that to get his career jump started. But. Um, Typically, for that kind of career path, it takes about 10 years, maybe maybe five to 10 years. You know, it just it depends on the person and their ambition and their resources, of course. So what inspired you, um, Captain Monet? What inspired you to actually get into, apart from one, or was that the only driver? Was the only driver for you to actually want to give back and inspire? Or was there something else that motivated you? My drive, uh, well, I'm going to say this off the bat, I always wanted to be a pilot. That's, oh. that's, a, that's number one. Um, I, I've been, I've been back and forth between wanting to be a pilot, wanting to be, you know, something else. Um, but I always came back to being a pilot and right. that started, um, about when I was three years old, my mom told me that, um, actually I remember from a picture, um, there's a picture where I'm standing on a nightstand. My mom took a picture of me. I have my little Frenchy outfit cause I'm half French hence Monet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I was holding a little airplane, a little, uh, model of a seaplane. Yeah. And I remember that picture and I was like, my God, like I've always been fascinated in planes. And yeah. I remember growing up as a kid, we would live in Inglewood, California, which is right along the flight path of LAX. So the planes would come in and land. We're, we're right underneath it. And I would always look up at the planes like, mommy, look at the plane, daddy, look at the plane. And, and uh, my family, my friends, they all noticed that I love airplanes. My brother actually took me uh, to, the, to LAX airport every once in a while just to stand by the runways and take pictures. You know, so we would do that kind of thing. And my brother also, um, we have different fathers, but the same mother. So, he, so I, I still consider my full brother. Of course. Um, yeah. he, he took me to, uh, he took me a lot of family trips because he worked for Delta Airlines. Yeah. He was not a pilot, but he did start as a ramp agent, moving baggage and things like that. Yeah. And throughout his entire career, he went from that all the way up to one of the vice presidents for Delta Airlines. Oh. So. Throughout my childhood, we would go on family trips, um, right. going all the different kind of places. And I just fell in love with being inside airplanes and flying them and looking outside the window and, you know, that kind of thing. And throughout my entire childhood, I would be the one at school um, to be playing kickball. And then, you know, I look up at a plane and I get bumped <laughs> in the head by the kickball, like, Brian, pay attention, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, 
then in high school, um, I was still in love with aviation, but I kind of started to drift away from it a little bit uh, due to 9-11. You know, right. you know, that whole thing happened and um, I got discouraged and I was like, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe it's too dangerous, that kind of yeah. thing. And I just got discouraged, but I'm sure a lot of people did. Even people who were pilots at the time, like quit and furloughed, all kinds of stuff. Um, so around that time, I got into graphic design. Mm -hmm. And I started like, uh, you know, drawing, getting into graphic design. I actually wanted to become a video game designer at one point. Uh, but then in 2003, my senior year in high school at Compton High School, uh, my teacher, which was an office, office occupations teacher, uh, nothing, to do with, nothing to do with aviation at all, took us on a field trip to the Compton Airport, which was like a couple blocks away. Just got in a bus, went to the Compton Airport, and we went to this place called Tomorrow's Aeronautical Museum. And this museum slash flight school was ran by an individual named Robin Peckrave. Robin Peckrave is a, is a uh, I wouldn't say like super famous, like not a whole lot of people really know him, but in the Hollywood community, he's very, 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 very famous because right. he's a stunt uh, helicopter pilot. At least he was back then for a lot of movies like Broken Arrow and things like that. Okay. He started a flight school for minorities and youth who yeah. didn't know how to become pilots because growing up, I always thought you had to go to the military to become a pilot. My parents yeah. thought that they didn't want me to go to the military. They wanted right. me to, you know, um, stick with something else. Like we, we would love you to be a pilot, son, but going to the military, uh -uh. and mm -hmm. even me, I was like, nope, no way. So that's another thing that kind of discouraged me from that. But yeah. in 2003, when we met Robin Petgrave and went to his program, he took us flying on a helicopter. And I'm not really interested in helicopters as much as everybody else, but mm -hmm. um, I was interested in airplanes. He had a fleet of airplanes there as well. And even though he took us up flying in a helicopter, I was just like, that spark came right back. I was like, oh, this is it. Okay. I want to be a pilot. I don't care what happens. I don't care if there's a 9-11 or 10-11 or anything like that. Right. I'm going to do it. <laughs> so um, I'm the one who came back the very next day, filled out an application, and I signed up for his uh, after school youth mentoring program, which is basically a program where you sign up and you basically you work um, you work hours towards flying lessons. It could be running a cafe, it could be answering phones, it could be sweeping, oh. cleaning, whatever. And mm -hmm. those hours would go towards actual flight time that yeah. other people would pay actual money for out of their pocket. Now, yeah. yeah, so I signed up for that. Nobody in my class signed up for it. It was just me. I was the only one I was like, yep, this is for me. Thanks. <laughs> this whole trip was for me. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and I worked at the school and during the summer uh, for two years. And in 2005, around March, actually the day before my birthday, March 31st, um, I got my private pilot license okay. and, and I didn't pay a dime out of my pocket to do it. I just exchanged work for flight time. Mm. And a lot of people can't say that they did that because it's not a whole lot of programs like that out there. So mm. got my private pilot certificate and worked my way up towards my instrument rating. I left California for a little bit and I went to Tulsa, Oklahoma to go to Spartan College of Aeronautics and Technology. And I got my instrument rating out there, which again, allows you to fly in the clouds without reference to the ground. And yeah. then a little while after that, I was training for my commercial license, but ran out of money. Couldn't take out okay. any more loans or anything like that because aviation is very expensive as I'm sure a lot of yeah. people here know. So I had yeah. to pack my bags, go home. And I went back to the Compton airport and I met up with one of my friends who actually did flight training with his name. Is, his name is Ron L. Norman. He became a flight instructor. Uh, while I was gone, when I came back, he trained me to get my commercial license. So I got my commercial license in 2007. And then from there, I started doing sightseeing tours, which I mentioned earlier, out of the Compton Airport. Yeah. And I've been building up my hours for years upon years uh, until eventually I landed a job at my current company, Silver Air. And wow. I actually have to give a shout out to my friend uh, Ismar Abdik. Um, he was one of my flight instructors as well at Compton Airport way back in 2003, 2004, 05. And we just kept in contact over the years. He got a uh, he got a job at Silver Air um, as a captain on a Phenom 100, which is a small private jet that carries six passengers. And he said, "Hey, Brian, this company they're looking for pilots. Um, are you interested?" And at the time, I was uh, doing sightseeing tours every once in a while, but it was very vague. Um, I was pushing wheelchairs at LAX, Delta Terminal, mm -hmm. Terminal Five. I love I I liked that job, but at the same time, I didn't like it. I was just like, I need to, I need to fly something. I had my hours, yeah. I had my certificates and ratings. I was ready to go, but nobody was hiring. It was very difficult what? to get a job back then. 
And he just said, hey, man, send the, um, your resume to the chief pilot at Silver Air and they'll call you. I'm like, OK, cool. So I sent it. And sure enough, that same day they, they gave me a call and they said, hey, tomorrow we want to have an interview with you on the phone. So during my break time at my wheelchair pushing job, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I took a break, had the phone interview while I was sitting on the staircase in the hallway um, outside the terminal. You know, it took half an hour for them to say, OK, you seem like you're you're a sharp individual. We'll go ahead and put you in the right seat of the phenom for a demo flight with Ismar. So I got oh. to fly with my friend. <laughs> right. I got to fly with my friend and yeah. I did that for maybe about two weeks or so. And after that. We flew to this place called Livermore, California, which is Northern California. We landed at the airport, and I didn't even know this, unbeknownst to me. Chief pilot was there, director of operations was there, and the application sitting on the table was there. And they said, okay, you go ahead and sign this uh, and, you know, read it, sign it, and you're officially a Silver Air pilot. And I was hired on as a safety pilot, which is not an official crew member position, but it is a position yeah. where I could build flight time and I can fly jets right. and, you know, start building upon the dream. And eight years later, Gulfstream 550 captain, here we are. <laughs> and that's my career. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So when you, when you refer, there's a few things I want to ask, but you mentioned building flight time. Does that equate to experience? Is that what you mean by building flight yes. time? Oh, okay. Yes. Um, every hour or, you know, even... 0.1 of an hour, 0.5, whatever. Every time I'm sitting behind the controls of an aircraft and there's a flight instructor on the left-hand side, I can actually log that time. I can yeah. actually put it into my logbook and it'll add towards my total amount of hours, which can qualify me for higher positions. Right. Okay. Okay. So, you know, the, a common thread because our, our guest last week, he was also a captain, um, but he was commercial, your corporate. Um he actually lived next, near to an airport as well and would watch the aeroplanes fly overhead. And um, a commonality, even with regards to Demetrius, you gave him exposure. You had exposure to, you know, where you lived, to your older brother. And I wanted to ask you, How would you rank exposure in terms of um, in terms of inspiring young people, even adults, to mm -hmm. um, step out on careers? We're talking about aviation in particular, but you know, in, to venture into careers that generally are um, for the few, for the chosen few. How important is exposure? Sure, exposure has different levels. Um, you have a level where you see the goal where you want to be, you have that level of exposure and you have the level of exposure that shows you how to get there. That's what a lot of people are missing. They're missing the steps on how to get there. And it's very key, just like you said, showing young kids um, fly, you know, uh, standing next to the airport, taking pictures of airplanes, uh, plane spotting, we call it, um, mm -hmm. going to museums, uh, meeting pilots, anything like that, you know, that's, that's a level of exposure that most people unfortunately don't get. Um, yeah. When I took Demetrius to the airport, I did more than that. I took him act on actual flight. That's huge exposure right there. Um, without exposure, I wouldn't know how to become a pilot myself. That that trip to the Compton Airport back in high school, that was exposure for me. And that's yeah. all I needed. So yeah. it's just a little tiny, you know, oh, that's it. You know, a little light bulb that goes off in someone's head when they see the possibility and they see a path to get there. Because you can mm -hmm. see the possibility, but you don't know how to get there. You're, you're kind of stuck. It's just a dream. Right. Right. A dream without action is just going to stay a dream, right? right. So um, I think exposure is very important because you give them that idea, you give them that light bulb, you give them that that pathway to get from where they are to where they want to be. So that's why I think exposure is like the most important thing. And that's part of the reason why I made my YouTube channel. Um, it's just my name, youtube.com slash Brian Monette. Um, mm -hmm. I make videos of uh, my flying experience. Um, I take the camera in the airplane. I, I, I make vlogs. Um, I make comedy videos, little things like that to make people laugh, whatever. <laughs> and I, I show people that, you know, the lifestyle and I, I show yeah. them ways they can get there. And I explain my process, just like I explained on this call right now. Mm -hmm. um, I explain the exact same story uh, to hundreds of thousands of people. And mm -hmm. I get hit up all the time by people saying, hey, you know, most people don't talk about this kind of thing. And uh, we appreciate mm -hmm. you doing that. And that's exposure for them. Definitely. So it's exposure all the way around. And we also started our own 
flight program at the Compton Airport um, called Fly Compton. And uh, yeah. me, um, my friend Ronell Norman, uh, the one who helped me get my commercial license. Uh, we got Jonathan Strickland, uh, Michael Sherrill. Uh, we got a bunch of guys who used to fly at Robin's uh, program and got together and decided, hey, um, let's continue this on ourselves and continue exposing kids and showing them how they can have a brighter future in aviation. Right. And that was my next question. So what does Flight Compton do, um, Brian? Well, there's two sides. Um, mm -hmm. There's the Flight Compton Aero Club side and there's the Flight Compton Foundation side. Now, the okay. Flight Compton Foundation side, that's the one that's um, nonprofit. Um, we expose kids to aviation by having a class every other Saturday of every month throughout the year. And currently we have about 85 kids. Um, last year it was 40, but now we bumped up to 85. We literally doubled it in just been a few months. And we hold these classes and we have an actual flight instructor who teaches real people how to fly. You stand in front of those kids and they have a board right behind them and they show them fundamentals of flight, radio communications, you name it. And these yeah. kids are, who are fascinated in aviation, they take these notes and everything, just like I would, you know, if I got exposed to that. And they can actual they can actually log real flight time because after the ground class oh. is the flight class. And that's when the instructor, yeah. uh, different commercial pilots, whoever, they take them up flying. I've taken kids up flying myself. And we take them up yeah. flying in the pattern over at Compton. And we didn't just take, uh, what I mean by pattern is we take off, we make a circle, we come back, we land. Yeah. And it's a short flight, but it's, it's enough to spark that interest. Like I said, that's the same thing happened to me. Yeah. And um, they keep coming back, keep coming back. The kids keep populating more and more and more. And so that's the foundation side. The Aero Club side is literally just a flight school. So that's where students come in, they pay, they take out loans, whatever. And they go okay. from zero hours to becoming a private pilot, instrument pilot, commercial pilot, flight instructor, whatever they want to be. Yeah. And they build up their hours that way. Now we could do the same thing with the youth program side with the nonprofit side. Mm -hmm. However, that's the part where we was, like I said, it's nonprofit. So that's the part yeah. where we accept donations and right. you know, funding, outside funding to help fuel the program so that we can help these kids get to where they need to be. Right. Excellent. And how long have you been running that for? We started uh, just after COVID started, really, um, in 2020. I think it was June of 2020. Um, some of our pilot friends got furloughed from their from their uh, careers. And uh, actually me personally, I got a little bit busier during that time because, you know, in the private world, when COVID hit, uh, a lot of companies got busier because anybody who could afford it would want to fly away from others. Oh, yeah. So we got busier. But there was other guys that got furloughed and we all got together during our time off, had a conversation and we said, hey, um, you know, this program that Robin ran back in the day, you know, he's kind of ramping down a little bit. He's not doing it anymore. There's no program here at the Compton Airport where we're exposing kids to aviation anymore. And we all agree that that's something very positive for the community. So we decided yeah. to start our own aero club, literally just like that. It was just one phone call, <laughs> one phone call. We were all together on the phone and we just decided to go ahead and do it. So um, we appointed a president and we appointed a, a vice president. We appointed the chief flight instructor. We appointed a director of operations. I'm the director of social media. And we put all these uh, places for the different aero club officers. Um, and we just uh, ran with it. And throughout the years, we've been um, just building from here. We start off with just one airplane, one uh, single single engine Piper Cherokee, which is a small plane, and that's our that's our flagship airplane. <laughs> and we just uh, we just kept ramping up, we just building from there. Now we have three planes, and we're just working to get more because even with three planes, that's still very few to take care of eighty five students. Yeah, so we are. Um, so we're still working our way up. We're just uh, getting our name out there. Another reason I was wanting to take on this interview so I could help uh, support the team and uh, get our name out there. Yeah. Uh, Fly Compton. Um, Fly Compton is, uh, I, I would say, the best way on the West Coast uh, to expose minorities mm -hmm. to aviation and show them that there's, you know, something brighter out there. And it's not just pilots. Uh, we got engineer classes. We have uh, drone classes. Right. We have uh, air traffic control, all kinds of stuff. So it's, it's, it's mainly tar uh, targeted towards the aviation industry, but there's many different fields that people can go into in case, because, you know, not everybody wants to fly. Not, not everybody right. uh, you know, wants to get behind the controls. Some people are afraid. Some people get sick naturally. You know, so not everybody's the same. Mainly we focus on being a pilot, but there's other fields as well. So many fields in aviation is can't even count it on my toes and hands. <laughs> so. Yeah. so that's that's so inspiring because when I think about 
especially you know being in Compton being in the area that the your catchment area so to speak um I wanted to know as you said not everyone wants to be a pilot but you're exposing children to engineering drones what are the um, because of course you must have real life anecdotes of course you're not going to share personal information of your students now but you must have personal anecdotes that you can say I know I'm making a life-changing difference in the life of these children in the lives of these children regardless to whether they um you know a hundred percent of them end up being pilots I know mm -hmm. that I've done my job to maybe focus them keep them off the streets whatever it is so what what are the what are the what are the fruits of what you are doing other than developing pilots okay well um i say other than developing pilots uh, mm -hmm. there, there's a few things that we're doing we got a we got a couple of engineer students um yeah. who have got involved uh, and actually mechanic students as well who have actually enrolled in spartan college of aeronautics and technology we have uh, there's a branch of spartan college out in uh, los angeles as well as well as Oklahoma. And we have a few students who actually uh, train out of there also. And, um, but more on the pilot side though, uh, which is kind of the main focus here, we have one pilot named Maceo, uh, mm -hmm. who literally just got his private pilot license last week. And he started off with our program, just being a part of the classes and kind of like volunteering and helping out and things like that. And we actually paid for his flight training through the foundation. So he literally went from zero hours all the way up to private pilot. And that's the kind of, um, that's the kind of example that we're trying to set for all the people out right. there. So now that he's a private pilot, we literally have a living example right here. Yeah. Here you go. Because right. we have we have students who uh, who pay for their flying lessons and became pilots that way. Yes, okay. but on the foundation side, there's not too much because you know lack of resources and everything. Yeah. But this particular individual studied hard. He made it happen. He worked hard, and he made it happen. So we have a living example. You know, ready to go. Like, look, this is what we have right here. We want to create more of this. We want to multiply this. To infinity like let's go and so, what does it do for the um what does it do for the um, the esteem um of the children as they go through your program um because of course you just mentioned you know having a living example so there's um key exposure um key motivated to show that you know if he can do it i can do that but what does it do you notice any um any notable notable changes or notable advantages to the children as a whole once they embark on the program of um of the quality and caliber of which you're providing brian I would say that since Maceo got his private pilot license, there's been a, a few students who have gotten more motivated to uh, focus harder in class. We have a class of you know 85 students, like I said, and there are some students there, I'm not going to lie, some of them are just there just to be there. But yeah. there are some that have the natural ambition to actually study hard and make something of themselves. And I noticed that that number of students who are motivated to, to do something for themselves has gotten a little bit higher since that happened because right. you actually see it as possible. It's one thing that, right. you know, say, hey, this is what you can get out of this program. But when you actually see it, there's, there's a little bit more you can look forward to, you know what I mean? Exactly. And do you have any pupils who perhaps are not so interested in the, um, the traditional academic route? You know, they may be, you know, not the best attenders at school, etc., but are excelling in your program? Do you have any... I honestly don't have the stats on that. I'm not, I, I can't oh, really answer that question uh, with confidence because um, yeah, I don't know the stats of most of the kids in school and everything like that, but I do know that majority of them excel in this program for sure. Okay. So yeah. you mentioned that you are, um, you, you've had this flight club. First of all, with regards to um, airports accommodating such things, is this, is this um, unique to America or is it something that, would you know anything about internationally if it's something that could be done on an international scale? I believe it's something that can be done on an international scale. Whether it is or not, I don't know. Um, sure. I do know that the West Coast of California definitely lacks that. Um, sure. There are some programs. Uh, I notice, I don't know the names of the programs, but I do notice one in, in Houston, Texas, that's run by a, a colleague of ours. And I know there's some things going on in Florida, uh, a few things on the East Coast, but in the West Coast, we lack a lot so we're I, I believe we're definitely one of the first ones to do this 
besides Mr. Pecoray, um, we're, we're one of the main ones, especially in Los Angeles area. I don't think there's mm -hmm. anything at all. I believe that we are the only one in Los Angeles area that does this. Uh, other flight schools are just like, uh, you know, come in and pay, take out loans, whatever kind of flight schools. But we offer this whole foundation side, which is completely different than anything I've seen. Um, right. that, it's, it's just not the norm. In fact, people ask me all the time uh, from different states, like, hey, do you know anything, any kind of program like this out where I live? And I'm like, sorry, unfortunately, I don't. You know, the best thing to do is just Google your local flight school. But for the people in L.A., we could definitely help. But um, I was we were talking about that as well. We we're talking about expansion. As far as mm -hmm. flight Compton, we want to expand to different parts of the world. Um, mm -hmm. But before we do that, we have to make sure that the, the spot here that, that we have right now yeah. is up and running the way we want it to before we actually focus on other things. Because we have, you know, our founders, we all have jobs. We all have different careers in aviation and we get busy from time to time. We And, you know, we are trying to get to a point where we can hire a full staff to take over things. Uh, but right now we just lack the resources for it. And we're only a, a couple of years in right now. So it's just a matter of time, you know, before we're able to push out there and get things in in every state i hope to see someday i hope fly compton will be everywhere <laughs> i do too i do too How, what's yeah. your um take up for for girls is it what oh we got a lot of girls in our classes we got a lot of girls yeah. in our classes um yeah uh women make up less than i, I believe five percent of the overall um aviation community especially as far as pilots go i mean women just they they tend to not get into STEM programs, you know, science, technology, engineering, and math. And uh, we're trying to show them that, you know, it's possible for girls to do it too. We actually have girl flight instructors. We have women flight instructors who are actually teaching some of the classes sometimes. African-American women flight instructors at that. So, and that, that's the that's the extreme minority, you know, Af African-American women in aviation is, is slim to none. You, you hardly see them at all. So we're actually trying to make a difference in that as well and get more of them out there. Right, right. So um, with regards to you, back to you for a moment, um, Captain Brian, mm -hmm. with regards to you being a um, corporate pilot, what is the life of a corporate pilot? Without, don't, don't have any fear of boasting. What, what was the life? <laughs> What's the, tell, tell us about the life of a corporate pilot. Because we, we're here to inspire, you know, you've been greatly informative. We're here to inspire also. So what is the life of a corporate pilot like? I guess I can start by talking about the differences between being an airline pilot and a corporate pilot. Um, I mm -hmm. look at being an airline pilot as uh, being a bus driver. Okay. You, you, you drive a big bus, you have a lot of passengers in the back um, or cargo, and mm -hmm. you're flying designated routes. Fly to, you, you do the same routes all the time. You know, you got the A line, you got the B line, you know, that kind of thing. Whereas yeah. in corporate, we're kind of like a Uber or a limousine service. You know, we yeah. cater to the people in the back who can afford it. And they, they say, hey, this is where I want to go. And we take them there. It's kind of like that. So okay. in the corporate world, I think it's kind of like a gamble. You can get a, you can nail a good job, but you can nail a bad one. There are some bad corporate jobs okay. out there where people are very unhappy. Okay. Um, not going to name those companies. <laughs> I don't want to do that. But there are there are some companies out there where where pilots are, you know, they're they're just not happy. Like the work culture yeah. is just bad, or the pay is bad, or a combination of both. Benefits could yeah. be bad. Whereas you got a company like Silver Air, where you know things are pretty good. And you got other companies where or, or just individual owners, like let's say a famous celebrity or something like that, a famous rapper or an actor or something who hires their own personal pilots, basketball player, whoever. And they could be living the dream. They could be making quarter of a million to half a million dollars a year and having the best yeah. benefits and traveling to the best destinations. So that's yeah. what I mean when I say corporate is a gamble, because you can have there's a wide range right. of kind of jobs you can have. Whereas okay. the airline is kind of just like there, there's there's bad and good airlines as well, but for the most part, they're kind of linear. They kind of go in the same direction. Right. Um, the retirement, I would say, is probably mostly better for the airlines based mm -hmm. on all the people that I talk to. I right. can't give my own personal experience on that, but the people okay. that I talk to, the people I know who have those airline jobs, they say, yes, airline retirement is definitely key. Right. However, if you manage your money right and do everything like that, you know, your retirement can be good anywhere you go. Um, right. But in corporate, um, there are some good um programs you know 401k all this kind of all those kind of things where you know it can lead towards a better retirement but for the most part it's, it depends on the mindset of the person when you're in corporate you can take all your money you can just blow it off or you can actually use it invest it and put it in proper places so you can have a good retirement and probably have a better retirement than the airline guys if you really right right um but i would say um as far as me um i'm sitting here in saint martin uh, saint martin right now <laughs> 
sitting in the Caribbean, just like looking out the airplanes. See the sun in my face right now. It's a beautiful picture outside. And I got airplanes flying right over and landing at the airport right there. It's a good sight. You know, beautiful people out there is enjoying the beach, enjoying the pool, enjoying everything, and just living the Caribbean lifestyle. It's just amazing. So it, with my current job flying the Gulfstream 550, these are the kind of destinations that we've been going to lately. Uh, okay. During the wintertime, a lot of people go to cold places, but we've just been going to warm places, and it's been right. it's pretty cool. Um, there's other pilots and airplanes in our company at Silver Air that go all over the place. You know, it could be in a, they could be cold Denver or New York, or they could be out here. So you just never know where you're really going to go. But I think I landed a good position flying this airplane. And speaking of the airplane, it's just it's phenomenal. Um, really, <laughs> I started out I started out in the Phenom 100, which is a six seater passenger mm -hmm. jet. Worked my way up to a, a Citation jet, Cessna Citation jet. Sits eight passengers, and I moved up to a Lear 60, which I think was like ten passengers, and moved up to a Challenger 300, which is bigger than that. And then I moved up to the Gulfstream, which you know sits like twenty people total. Which is just uh, insane, and uh, it's just it's just a beast of an airplane. We're flying like ten thousand feet above the airline traffic. You know, they're flying around the weather. We're flying over it. You know, and we're flying wow. a lot faster and stuff. So that's that's a huge thing that I really like. And a lot of my friends get jealous of how whatever I'm posting. <laughs> yeah, you know, like we're we're cruising up at forty five, forty seven thousand feet while they're sitting at thirty thirty five thousand feet. You know, it, okay. It's just, uh, Crazy. And in fact, uh, just coming in here uh, yesterday, we were passing mm -hmm. by, uh, we flew past JetBlue and flew past Delta Airlines coming in here. We're just looking at them down below. And it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's always fun. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but my job, uh, we're on salary. So um, we, okay. we don't get paid hourly. We get paid by salary. So whether I'm flying here, uh, chilling right here or sitting at home or in the air, mm -hmm. I'm still getting paid. Um, okay. We do make uh, what we call international per diem which I call food and beverage money. Um, <laughs> so I make a couple hundred bucks here and there while we're out, out of town. But uh, for the most part, we were on salary. So we kind of make the same thing, which is pretty cool. I actually like that payment plan a little bit better. Um, there are jobs out there to pay a lot more. And yeah, especially in, in Silver Air, there, there's uh, airplanes that pay a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm pretty content with where I'm at right now um, for the time being. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, I don't know. Uh, oh, I'm pretty sure most of the people here know uh, Mr. Sean Combs, P. Diddy, yeah, the rapper, yeah, producer, yeah, actor, all that kind of stuff. So uh -huh. I'm, a, I'm his personal pilot. Uh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Uh, we didn't fly him out here this time. Uh, we actually flew him out here during New Year's and during Christmas. But um, right now we just we flew a charter, so we just flew random people that we never met before. Like I said, limousine, Uber service. So random people. They're totally chill, real cool people. Um, I don't know what they do for a living, but mm -hmm. they can afford to fly a Gulfstream. So I'm pretty sure whatever they do, they're very well off. Very happy people, very nice, very polite. Yeah, and, would uh, be. That's, usually, <laughs> that's the usual caliber of people that we run into. They're usually very polite, usually very happy. It's, it's yeah. only every once in a while you run into that person that's just like nonchalant, don't want to talk to anybody. Now that's fine. You know, do what you want to do. You're paying for it. Do what you want to do. You go to right. back and sit down and be quiet while I fly. <laughs> 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 but no, um, these people are amazing. They're amazing. They like to come up to the cockpit and just talk to us. Um, one of them asked about my YouTube. They didn't ask about my YouTube channel, but they asked if I make YouTube videos because I actually have my phone out and I was filming. Oh, as we were cruising. Okay. I was filming. I was filming the islands and everything. He was like, "Oh, I see you filming. Do you have a YouTube channel?" And I was like, "Have you seen my YouTube channel?" He was like, "No, I'll just ask you if you had a YouTube." Channel. Like I get a post from time to time. People ask about my YouTube channel. I thought he was one of them. He was just like, oh, okay. "I just wanted to know if you had one." I was like, "Oh yeah. yeah, I do. Here's my card." Wow. Wow. Yeah, really nice yeah, people. Um, but, but my point is, you don't get that in the airlines. Mm -hmm. You know, in the airlines, you, you got to, well, especially after 9 11, you got a locked door now. You are separated from the people during the entire flight. And you don't get that interaction like you do uh, in the corporate world. Right. Right. So, see, yeah. that, that was, I didn't know you had, I know we you have like car politics, but I did not know you had like, um, like airplane politics. So, there's, there's the Rolls Royce of of of, of airplanes, and as you say, there's the the bus. <laughs> I didn't Absolutely. realize. I Absolutely, didn't. So, that, that's the best way I can explain it. You know, bus yeah, no, was very clear. <laughs> yeah, very clear analogy. Very clear analogy. So, with mm -hmm. regards to um, you said you're content where you are, which is excellent. But you also mentioned um that there are potentially better play, better paid. 
um, or more lucrative, I'm sure you're lucratively paid, but more sure. lucrative paid. Uh, is that linked to the type of um, aeroplane that you fly? It is. Yeah. It is, okay. Yes. Uh, there are high, higher paying jobs for the Gulfstream 550 for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm probably in the, I'm probably slightly above the mid range. Right. I'd probably say I'm in between the, the most mid paid and the highest paid, probably like mm-hmm. right around there, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. our, our company at Silver Air, they try to be competitive as far as like entry positions. This is just an entry position for me, by the way. I've been with the company for eight years. But I've only been flying a Gulfstream since August. Okay. So this is technically an entry level captain position for this plane. So I, my my base salary is like above average, which is pretty right. good. Right. So okay. It's only, you know, I'm going to get bumped up and pay for it. Of here. course. Pretty sweet. Okay. But yeah, we have we have a wide range of aircraft. Like I said, uh, we start off with a P-900, which we don't have that plane anymore. Um but we do have, uh, we have Learjets, we have Citations, we have Learjets, Gulfstreams, uh, Global Expresses. Uh, we even had a, a Boeing, a couple of Boeing BBJs at one point. We used to own Tony Robbins BBJ. And I got to fly and I actually made a YouTube video about it. You might want to check it out. Uh, <laughs> so, Brian, sorry to interject. So with regards to these planes, in terms of levels, where, where are the levels? Because you're reading up these names, you're so adverse, um, you know, well versed with them, but with regards to the levels, so that you're obviously you're you're flying a high caliber plane now. The other ones you mentioned, where do they come in in ranking in terms of? Sure. Yeah, the, the the planes I just described, I, I named them in in regards to size and capacity oh. and and range. Right. Um, okay. So we go from a small Phenom 100 up to a Global Express or a BBJ that can fly pretty much halfway around the world. Um, oh. We have the smaller planes that could probably fly, you know, maybe from West Coast to East Coast if you're lucky. Right. Okay. You no, know, and of okay. course the capacity of passengers go up, uh, responsibilities go up, the speed goes up, the altitude goes up, you know, the capability of the airplane, the performance goes up. Right. And, and, okay. and so on. So yeah. So like I said, a wide range of of airplanes in our fleet. Variables. Yeah. Definitely. So with regards to um, what would you say to, I'm going to start with parents, okay? So what would you say to parents, aunts, uncles um, with regards to, no, I'm going, I'm going to go to another question first of all. Why aviation? Mm-hmm. Why would you recommend aviation? Why, would, why, why do you recommend it? I would recommend it because there's such a wide possibility of positions out there that you can find yourself in that pay very well. Right. Um, I'm talking about well over six figure incomes from most careers in aviation. I'm talking about from air traffic control to a pilot, to an engineer, um, just just about anything you can think of in aviation. The, like the pay is just much higher because aviation is just an expensive uh, field to operate. You know, we're right. talking about the plane that I fly is like eighty six hundred dollars to operate it for an hour. So you can imagine the right. kind of money that that's circulating throughout the aviation industry. So of course, with all that yeah. money circulating, the pay scales have to circulate up right. there as well. So right. I would recommend aviation. Me personally, because I just mm-hmm. enjoy flying planes. I think yeah. planes are just amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I I still get even though with the knowledge I have right now, I still get blown away when I see something so massive flying through the sky. Yeah. very slow speeds coming in the land I, I still think it's incredible and that just blows yeah. my mind so yeah. it's just it's just a fascination of that overall and I think if people would just take the time to just look up in the sky and just see what the kind of world that we live in right now because mm-hmm. 100 years ago a little bit over 100 years ago none of this was happening mm-hmm. everything was just ground-based you didn't see any aircraft in the sky you only saw birds mm-hmm. and now we have <laughs> aircraft uh, hundreds of thousands of aircraft flying every single day over your head. It's just, it's just mesmerizing, but it's only mesmerizing mm-hmm. if you really take the time to think about it and appreciate it. Right. So I tell people to get into aviation because it, one is just really cool. Mm-hmm. And two, it pays very well. Um, it, and I think that the more like-minded, well-brought-up minds that we have in aviation, the better it's going to be in the future. Yeah. So that's why I recommend it. And plus, we want to implement safety in aviation. That's one of the biggest things in aviation is safety. And you don't get that everywhere you go. You know, you do have safety briefings at different jobs and everything like that. But we really focus really hard on safety. Like we got training programs that are months long that are just dedicated to safety alone. 
So it's a sure. safe industry to be in. You know, you got yeah. job security, you got job placement, you got good incomes, you got good retirement, you got good everything. So it's, this is nothing I can say that's bad about aviation. You know, as right. long as you're safe and you just do it right, then you can have a great life. Excellent. Well, what would you? Thank you, but you so I'm sold. I'm sold. Um, <laughs> you might become a pilot now. Huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll be on your course soon. <laughs> um, so with regards, to, what would you say to parents? We're thinking about exposure. We 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 know that there are many different. You've mentioned quite a few, um, Brian. Many different ways to expose your children. Um, what would you say to parents about being open-minded? Many parents may have an idea of what they want their children to do or not want to do. What would you say to parents, aunts, uncles, cousins who would have never considered it for anyone in their family? What would your advice be? Um, well, you have parents out there that see aviation and they think it's too expensive or mm. it's too dangerous yeah. or whatever it may be. But yeah. I would just say, just try it out. Just take a kid on a trip to an airport and see what they think. See if they like it. See if they're interested or if they're going to be on their phone the entire time. Mm -hmm. um, fine. And it's not even just aviation. I would say just take your kids somewhere that's different and just expose them yes. to it and see if it's something that they're fascinated in. Because a lot of kids I notice nowadays just don't have an interest in anything. They just go through school mm -hmm. and they breeze through it and they graduate and they're like, well, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. Go get a yeah. job at whatever and, yeah. you know, and just not make anything on themselves, just live a below average life. Yeah. And I don't think that's the way to do it. Like yeah. um, I have a 10 year old daughter. I take her out on flights. Yes, I expose her to aviation. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I got a YouTube <laughs> video on it. I, I take her out flying yeah. and, and she gets fascinated in that kind of stuff. And yeah. I don't even know if she wants to be a pilot right now because she takes interest every once in a while, but mm -hmm. she is into science. That's her favorite course in school. Okay. And she's okay. a straight A student, you know, so she has yeah. a fascination in something. It's just a matter of, what she decides to do later on but the fact right. that i took the time to just show her the possibilities and show her that there's more to just flipping burgers or working in an office in a cubicle somewhere no offense to people who do but no there's a lot more oh. out there you know especially for someone yeah. with a mind that's just you know just like a sponge and just absorbs so much information and just has big dreams you know there's there's more to yeah. just living a substandard life you know there's so much more out there so just taking your kid going to an airport or going to a hospital or going to a, a golf course I don't know it just show them mm -hmm. something and they'll be like oh mom dad this is cool I like this thanks for showing me this and they might enroll yeah. in whatever. you know that's all I recommend yeah. to parents you know just just get them out there expose them mm -hmm. show them something different that's all <laughs> yes no great advice great advice and by the way um speed injection audience Brian Monet is very funny <laughs> it's, it's full of personality full of personality thanks I appreciate um, that I try. And you're, make, I try. <laughs> <laughs> you're making this dialogue very easy because of that. So thank you. Um, so back to the, the Compton, the flight flight club. Um, where can we find you? Um, how can we follow you? How can we get involved? Because even if you're, and again, you mentioned, and we also want to give you the international exposure, even though we may not be attending because we're not in Compton, how can we get involved? What can we do? Definitely. Okay, for the Aero Club side, the Fly Compton Aero Club side, it's uh, flycompton.com. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Uh, the foundation side, if you want to donate to us or if you want to get your child involved in our program, there's flycomptonfoundation.org, O-R-G, flycomptonfoundation.org. I definitely recommend that. Um, now, as far as me, uh, oh, also, sorry, more about Fly Compton. Um, there's Fly Compton on Instagram. I'm one of the admins for that account. So if you reach out, either I'll answer or somebody else will. Mm -hmm. And we also have a Fly Compton Foundation on Instagram as well. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, um, my primary Instagram is Mayhem Park. Uh, that's Mayhem as in Mayhem Chaos and uh, Park. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just put those two together. That's me. Mm -hmm. um, and also, like I said, I run the Fly Compton page. And my YouTube channel is just my name, Brian Monette. You can find me there. Okay, excellent. Well, are there any, um, are there any, with regards to, I know you mentioned engineering. It's the last question, by the way. Thank you, Brian. Um, mm -hmm. So I know you mentioned engineering drones. Now, drones was, is something that um, I came in looking at different aviation sites, etc. Drones came up quite a lot. 
do you know mm -hmm. anything about advancement in um, the more productive side of using drones? We know people use it for recreation, but is there anything that's emerging now in that side? Uh, I just might. Give me one second. Okay. <laughs> So I bought this little guy right here. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I kid you not when I say I'm, uh, I like drones as well. Okay, so okay. Yes, uh, I'm a drone pilot as well. Um, I actually brought this out here. I, I haven't flown this uh, outside yet, but this is a FPV drone, which stands for first person view. It's little goggles okay. that come with it. So it looks like you're actually flying oh. it from the perspective of the drone. Um, okay. I'm going to be flying that out here pretty soon. But uh, we, we are um, implementing a drone program at Fly Compton. Um, there are a lot of drone jobs out there. Um, I actually had a couple of drones prior to this, and I've done some video jobs with those drones. Because um, I have my YouTube channel as well, so I've also you know, studied uh, video editing and that kind of stuff. So I take my drone footage, and I made video uh, edits for people. Uh, I did a wedding video before. I did a real estate video before. And they're, they're very high-paying jobs as well. So if you ever want to get into flying drones, uh, I definitely recommend uh, you reach out to us and check out our drone program, which will be coming out very soon. Uh, we do have professional drone pilots that come to the Compton Airport and they give demonstrations, which is pretty cool. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, I recommend just uh, researching it. Get on YouTube, look up uh, FPV drones or just drones in general, how to fly drones. Now, the thing that they've done, um, I would say in recent years, um, they don't allow a civilian to just buy a drone in a store and right. film videos for pay for a uh, commercial hire. Oh. So okay. they require what they call a part 107 uh, airman certificate, which is pretty much um, a drone pilot certificate, but you pretty much have to learn the airspace and the rules and regulations of an actual pilot. So you have to go through an oh. actual, actual course and you have to take a written exam and you have to submit that to the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration. And you have to get your actual Part 107 drone certificate, which looks very similar to a pilot license, surprisingly. Um, okay. And you can use that uh, to fly these for commercial. And I definitely recommend everybody does it because nobody wants to be out there and caught flying illegally because it's not good. Yeah. Very, very high fines. All right. <laughs> and uh, if, if anybody out there is a pilot already, then you really don't have to do much. All you got to do is go to the FAA website and just fill out a um, application form for the drone certificate, and then you take it to your local flight instructor and they sign you off and then you're good to go. Excellent, thank you. Any departing words, any, anything last that you would like to share with the audience, which is, you know, ranging from children to adults? <laughs> yeah. um, just, uh, just stay positive. You know, th this life is way too short to be negative and be mad about everything. I know there's a whole lot of drama mm -hmm. and chaos and, you know, stuff going on in this world. Um, I personally don't like to watch the news and everything like that because it's mostly negativity mm -hmm. and I just don't want to invite that into my world. So mm -hmm. I, I just recommend that people stay aware, but, you know, stay positive at the same time. Always look for the brighter side of things and just be good to your fellow neighbor. Just be kind to people. And, you know, just we, we all got to build up together. So that's just my recommendation to people. Uh, that and watch my YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Captain Brian Monet. Um, it's been it's a, a pleasure. pleasure. Sabina, it's nice meeting you and the team. Pleasure having you on the Spiritual Injection. We will definitely be following you. I've been liking your videos, etc. So we'll definitely stay in touch and would love to stay abreast with the flight content as you expand. Um, you know, we're always here to give you that international connection. So stay in touch and we'll definitely, um, you know, do something together in the future. Thank you so much. And give my love to your daughter as well. If you have to Thank you so much. Her in your, I appreciate you all. Thank you very much. No, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank all right, you take once care. again. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye. Okay, so that was Captain Brian Monet of Compton Flight Club. Um, what an inspiration. What insight <laughs> and you can tell you know what was really wonderful about having him um, and bringing him before you that's someone who's enthused by what he does and that's someone who who has paved the way for himself and also looking actively and working towards paving a way for others um he is 
aligning his um, his career with his purpose. <laughs> And you can tell it comes out in his in his mannerisms. It comes out in his whole tone, vibe, and energy. So Captain Brian Monet, he saluted when we only first came on. We salute you. Um, we will definitely be keeping in touch with you. But I wanted to go over to you, Jeffrey, uh, with regards to what was your take? I saw you. I was watching you. You were nodding and you know, at the same points as me. So what were your takeaways from that, brother? Um, firstly, um, thank you so much, Spiritual Injection, for another phenomenal um, episode and a, and a great show. Um, and, and I would love Brother Captain Brian to be on my pilot on any flight that I'll be flying on. Um, he is a joy to listen to. He showed such passion um, for the vocation that he um, is in, and he's so passionate about it, he wants to share it with, with others. And it reminded me of the, 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 the overriding theme of spiritual injection about having a mindset and yeah. being exposed to certain information and professions and opportunities because exposure is everything. And over the last two weeks regarding aviation, all of the captains that we've spoken to have spoken about opportunities that they've been able to achieve based on exposure and one of the themes that has been shared with the spiritual injection community from brother abdul hakim is to learn something about everything and the principles that were shared by the captains over the past three two weeks mm -hmm. are interchangeable with all different aspects of life aspects of different career paths or professions or, or purpose or passions, they're all interchangeable and yeah. they can be equally applied in every field. So yeah. whilst he's sharing what he's sharing, I'm not only thinking of aviation, I'm thinking of pretty much all aspects of life where we can benefit self, family and others just by dealing with those fundamental principles which have been shared. So I, 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 was, I really, really enjoyed that, um, <laughs> that interview. Um, the interview was phenomenal. Um, you know, I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Sister Sylvia. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So I can see that, you know, within the chat with regards to, you know, the points. And we really do want you to come away um, with something. We want you to come away with a principle that you can keep on the forefront of your mind, um, you know, over the, until we meet again in seven days. Um, so that we can, you can feel yourself incrementally um, growing in capacity to believe in yourself, growing in capacity. And, and you actually made the point that I was going to make, brother, with regards to knowing something about everything. And, you know, what he was saying about the exposure with regards to not only exposing yourself, but exposing those within your circle. I would like to invite before we go, before we go for the evening, I want to um, I want to hear one takeaway. I want to hear some of you. I want some feedback from you after call tonight. Give me your take. Now, this is not question stroke takeaway stroke preaching stroke. But it's no, we're not doing that. We're doing just your takeaway. What are you taking away from today? Would anyone like to come forward and let me know? What have you taken away from today? Doesn't just need to be as, as Brother Jeffrey said with regards to aviation. It could be a principle that you that you are going to adopt, or something that really um, stood out for you as an individual that um, is of key interest with you in your journey of growth. So, you've listened. What's your take or inspiration? We have Nana Nana Lee. We have inspiration. Okay. Brother Geraldo, exposure. Most, most of you are saying exposure. Yeah. yeah Key. Yes. Enjoy yeah. life. And, and before I bring you in, Brother Geraldo, exposure is what our the spiritual injection is predicated upon. That's what we do. We bring you the highest caliber. Anything is possible, Sister Jean. Anything is possible. We bring you high caliber exposure. And when we do have our master classes and workshops, we have the exposure on a week to week basis. And we also show you um, inroads, inroads, how to, um, the pathways in which you can 
thinking out of the box, Nana, exactly. I like it. We're doing our job. We're doing our job. So exposure is what we do. Passion and overcoming difficulties and or obstacles. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Okay. So I like you. Exactly. Alternative methods such as um, work for flight scheme. There is always a way. Yeah. That's key, brother Mikhail. Yeah, exactly. There's always a way. Exactly. Um, Antonio, um, encouragement to be great. Exactly. That's exactly what we're doing. And we're more than encouraging you, Brother Antonio. We are working on your mindset so you know you are great in this moment and that you'll continue to walk into greatness in the future and be able to measure your progress. Limitless mindset, Michelle. Exactly. Exactly. So um, if that's all, I'd like to leave you with on a high. And I really do want you to get your journals out tonight. Get your journals out tonight and write something. Friendships in all walks of life. We are superheroes, Sister G. Yes, we are. Get your journals out and make a note of these. Make Get some visions down tonight. Get some action points down tonight while you're on this high. And let's keep building. Let's keep building. And I really do hope, and I know it's a desire of our host, Abdul Hakim, that when you come on here week after week, that you really do feel, especially if you've been on a journey with us from the start, that you really do feel that you are elevating week after week. We really want you to manifest that, even if it's the tiniest difference in your life on a daily basis, that when you come to the spiritual injection next week, you can say, yes, I, I've made a step towards this goal or I've made a, a step towards um, um, making myself making my myself more efficient in terms of time usage all these little things are working towards that greater goal so let's find something that we're going to focus on let's get our journals out tonight and let's grow like I want to see us next year you know I want to see us next year continuously you know finding an excuse to put our, our wrist up in the camera because we're wearing that heavy watch <laughs> yeah. I want to see us I want to see us leave, reach that level of success where we can even invite some of you that are on the line on a special okay. guest to really give your first hand anecdotes of your journey to success and, be, and now look back to inspire others so thank you again we'll be back again next week with our host Abdul Hakim um, enjoy your evening everyone thank you thank you thank you so much Thank you.